So now that we have sort of talked about the overall steps in respiration, we have to go into the specifics. And you cannot talk about respiration without talking about aerobic respiration. Now, if you have done O-levels, uh, you will know that aerobic respiration is the breakdown of organic molecules in the presence of oxygen, okay? Uh, for example, glucose, which is C6H12O6, will be broken down with the assistance of six molecules of oxygen, where it forms six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water, and ATP. Uh, that was what you just had to know for O levels. But in A levels, however, it's going to become painful. You have been warned. <laughs> so, aerobic respiration is divided into four big stages. Glycolysis, link reaction, Krebs cycle, and also oxidative phosphorylation and chemiosmosis. Uh, oxidative phosphorylation and chemiosmosis are put together. They are, well, technically they are two separate processes, but we just lump it in as one. Now, it is very important as a student to know where these processes happen inside the cell. Glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm, link reaction and Krebs cycle happen in the matrix of the mitochondrion, and oxidative phosphorylation together with chemiosmosis happen in the inner mitochondrial membrane or the cristite. You can refer to them as both. That's fine. So, without wasting any time, we have to look at the first step to start the ball rolling, and that step is known as glycolysis. So, what exactly is glycolysis all about? Glyco basically means sugar-related. Lysis, in this case, means breakdown. So, it's the breakdown of sugar molecules, and it happens in the cytoplasm. That is the first important thing that you have to know about glycolysis. We started off with glucose molecules, right? Okay, but I know glucose is a ring structure, but to make life easier for us, I'm not going to represent glucose as a ring structure. I'm going to represent them as a linear structure instead. So as you can see, the six balls over here, the six dots, uh, those six balls represent carbon-6, C6H12O6. So it's the same glucose in its ring structure, but I'm just drawing it as a linear form because it's easier to do so. Trust me on this. Okay, so before glycolysis begins, you know, we have a bit of problem. Because you want to break down the glucose molecules, obviously. That's what respiration is all about. But the problem here is glucose is quite energy stable. Uh, energy stable meaning to say it is just not easily broken down. So you're like, God damn it, I want to break something down. But you know, uh, it's not easy to break down the glucose molecule. That is why glucose is referred to as an energy uh, storage molecule, right? It is different from ATP because ATP can easily be hydrolyzed, but glucose isn't. So the solution is you got to make glucose more reactive or unstable. So how do you make it unstable? So some of my students will say, well, you can increase the temperature. But remember, these this is in your cell. You cannot just increase the temperature of your cells easily because your enzymes can denature. So we need to have a different solution to that. And the solution is to phosphorylate the glucose molecule. Sounds very fancy, but what exactly does phosphorylate the glucose mean? Phosphorylate the glucose just means adding phosphates. So then comes the question, where does the phosphate come from? The phosphate comes from ATP. Remember, I told you before that ATP is an immediate source of energy. So if you want glucose to have more energy, it can receive energy from ATP. That's one function of ATP too. So each ATP molecule will provide one phosphate group, or the PI, and to the, to the glucose molecule. What exactly happens is, look at the ATP, the phosphate has gone to the glucose molecule, attached to either sides, as you can see over there, okay? And what happens to the ATP molecule? The ATP is now called ADP, adenosine diphosphate. 
So to simplify this, you just have to say that the glucose molecule is first phosphorylated using two ATP molecules, which will become two ADP. And that glucose molecule now has two phosphates attached to either sides, okay? And from stable, it becomes unstable, okay? Or more reactive. This is good. It becomes more reactive. And you have to know the name of that molecule. The name of that molecule is known as fructose bisphosphate or fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. Why is it called fructose 1,6 bisphosphate? It's because the phosphate is attached to carbon number 1 and carbon number 6. Now, as a student, you might go, how the hell did the glucose actually become fructose? Uh, that is through a process known as isomerization, by the way. Uh, in reality, between... Uh, between the steps of glucose to fructose 1,6 bisphosphate, there are actually three to four steps. You don't have to know that extra three to four steps, by the way, in glycolysis. Um, but um, the glucose structure changes slightly and becomes fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. You have to know that it becomes fructose 1,6 bisphosphate, by the way. God, it's a mouthful to mention uh, the name of this molecule. Once it becomes fructose 1,6 bisphosphate, this is good because it's more reactive. So it's easier for the next reaction to happen. So based on my diagram here, tell me what happens to the fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. As you can see, it breaks down right in the middle and it forms two molecules of triose phosphate. What are triose phosphates? Triose is just a sugar with three carbons. Chapter 2, Biological Molecules. And why is it called triose phosphate? Because each of the sugar has a phosphate added to it. So the fructose has been broken down in the middle, and that is the lysis. And of course, what needs to happen is um, the triose phosphate will undergo the next stage, which is known as substrate-linked reaction, where it releases a little bit of energy, and that energy is used to make four ATP molecules. So you see, at the beginning of glycolysis, you had to spend two ATP, but towards the end of glycolysis, you get four ATP molecules. So it's a net gain of two ATP molecules, which is a good thing, okay, over here. And of course, what actually happens is uh, the molecule also undergoes oxidation. Oxidation in this case means dehydrogenation. What is dehydrogenation? It releases the hydrogen atoms. And in the previous video, I told you that the hydrogen atom doesn't know where to go. It needs to go into the inner mitochondrial membrane. Uh, so to transport it to the inner mitochondrial membrane, we enlist the help of NADs, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. You don't have to memorize the long name. I'm just showing off a little bit, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, the NAD acts as the hydrogen carrier. Uh, what does it mean by it acts as the hydrogen carrier? It accepts the hydrogen. And when it accepts the hydrogen, it becomes reduced NAD. The reason why it becomes reduced NAD is because the NAD has received the hydrogen. So the thiose phosphates undergo oxidation, but the NAD re undergoes reduction. And the final molecule that is formed in glycolysis is the two pyruvate molecules. So, it, so essentially, glycolysis is made up of the four steps. The four steps are as follows. Phosphorylation using two ATP molecules. Lysis to break it down into thiose phosphates. Substrate linked reaction, SLR. You cannot write SLR in the exam. You have to write out the full name. And of course, oxidation or dehydrogenation. So these are the four steps of glycolysis in a nutshell. So in summary, for glycolysis, what you have to know is that uh, the glucose molecule, again, just writing it back again, the glucose molecule is phosphorylated using 2 ATP. Why? You must know the reason why. Because glucose is too stable. So we phosphorylate it by spending 2 ATP to make it more reactive. It becomes fructose 1,6 bisphosphate, which will break down into thiose phosphates. The thiose phosphates will then undergo substrate link reaction and also oxidation to produce four ATP molecules and two reduced NAD. And the end product 
of the glucose when it's broken down is two pyruvate molecules uh, and each of the pyruvate are just three carbon. So in a nutshell, what have you done to the glucose molecule? You have broken it down into half to become pyruvate. You've released out some of the energy to get ATP and you've also released out some of its hydrogen to get the reduced NAD. So that is what pyruvate, uh, that is what glycolysis is all about.